Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, we will continue with our discussion on uh, material requirements planning, and we are going to solve another example that is example four. This is similar to the previous examples. That is example uh, two and three, but here we are considering the safety stock as well. So we didn't consider safety stock in previous examples. So company has to maintain an, uh, a safety stock of 20 units and the order quantity is fixed order quantity of 100 units or uh, any multiples of 100. And the lead time is two weeks. So basic logic is the same as we saw in the last lecture, uh, but there we, we, had a uh, we had a planned order release in case we had some uh, net requirement. So when there was a net requirement and that was greater than or equal to zero, then we had a planned order release. Now in this case, uh, this quantity of zero actually changes and we will have a planned order release whenever we are having a quantity uh, that is approaching safety stock. So we have to maintain a safety stock of 20. So whenever uh, we are uh, going for planning order release, we have to consider the safety stock as well. So that is the main point that we will be looking at that uh, we have to maintain a safety stock of 20 units in this case. So that is the basic difference and we will see how we will incorporate that. So again, the order quantity is fixed order quantity of 100 units, safety stock of 20 units and lead time is 20 weeks. Now in week zero, that is before the planning horizon, we are having an inventory of 60 units. The gross requirements are 40. And we are also having a planned uh, schedule receipts of 100 in week one. So we can say that in week one, uh, the net requirements are zero because we are having requirements of 40 and the stock available is 160. So that is something negative. So we had the basic logic that we have to place order whenever there is positive net requirement. Or in this case, whenever uh, the quantity falls uh, below the safety stock. So we have to maintain a safety stock of 20 or greater. So we do not have any uh, planned order release for week one, so there will be no corresponding receipt as well because net requirements are zero. So after meeting the requirement of 40, we will be left with 120 units. So that is simply a previous periods in 20, that is 60 plus 100 that we will be receiving in this period. So 160 minus uh, the requirements of, uh, requirements of 40, so that will be 120. So even after meeting the requirements, we are left with 120 units. So again, the net requirements are negative in week two. So that is 40, that is the requirement minus 120 available with us. So that will be minus 80. So just like here, so we had something negative, a negative value here. We also are having negative value, negative 80. So there will be no net requirements. So there will be no corresponding planned order receipt as well. And after meeting the requirement of one, uh, sorry, meeting the requirement of 40, we will be left with 80 units. So the total supply is 120 and the requirements are 40. So we will be left with 80. So that is up to week two. And same holds two for week three as well. In week three, again, the requirements are 50. Available inventory is uh, 80. So we are again having negative net requirements. So we do not need any planned order receipt here as well uh, in the week three. And after meeting the requirement, we will be left with 30 units. So that is a uh, total supply is 80 and total demand is 50. So we will be left with 30 units. Uh, in week three as well, and we do not have any net requirements. So uh, that is up till week three. 
So we are able actually to meet the demand from the available inventory. We are not placing any new order. So I hope it is clear up till week three. Now in week four, situation is slightly different. Now the total requirement for week four is 60 plus 20 because we have to maintain a safety stock of 20 and that was being maintained up till week three. So we can say in a way that the requirements are 60 plus 20. 60 plus 20 for week four. So we are having 30 units from previous week stock. So that is 60 plus 20 minus 30. So net requirements for week four will be 50. So net requirements are positive or we are having a net requirement of 50 for week four. So we are having a large sizing policy of 100. So we do need to receive 100 in week four and the lead time is two weeks. So the order for these 100 will be placed two weeks earlier. So that is in week two. So what we are left with after meeting a requirement of uh, this total 60 in week four is the total supply that is 30 from previous period plus 100 from this period that is 130 minus 60. So 130 minus 60 will be 70. So we will be left with 70 units by the end of week four. Now, what about week five? Now in week five, again, the total demand is 60. And we have to maintain a safety stock of uh, 20 as well. So we can say that that will be something like 60 plus 20. So again, we are talking about the net requirements. And this is uh, projected available balance. So the net requirement for week uh, five will be 60 plus 20 minus 70 are available. So 80 minus 70, so that will be 10. So the net requirements for week five are 10. So we do need to have a planned order receipt of 100 here and the order will be placed two weeks earlier. So what we are left with uh, in week five is total supply is 50 plus 100 sorry, 70 plus 100 because we are having 70 here. So 70 plus 100 is the total supply. So that is 70 plus 100 minus requirement of 60. So 170 minus 60, 110. So we are left with 110 by the end of week five. Now for week six, we are having negative net requirements. And keep in mind that that number uh, should be incorporating uh, the safety stock as well. I mean, we should be having at least 20 units available. So we are actually having 30 units available. So the net requirements are negative. That is obvious. 80 minus 110 is negative 30. So after meeting the requirement of this 80, we are left with 30 units. So again, it should be at least 20. So you could have a cross check as well that we are having at least 20 units available by the end of every week. So in fact, uh, they are 30. The minimum is 30 in this case that we are maintaining, but the bottom line is 20. We should have at least 20 units. So after meeting a requirement of 80 units in week, uh, six from this inventory of 110, we are left with uh, these 30 units. Now, of course, if 30 is smaller than 80, so we are having uh, certain net requirements. So what are those net requirements? So again, that uh, for week uh, seven, we are having 
the gross requirement of 80 and we have to maintain a safety stock of 20 as well and we are having these 30 units available. So the net requirements for week 7 are 70. So we didn't have any net requirements in week 6 but we are having net requirements of 70. So we do need a planned order receipt here and planned order release will be two weeks earlier. So now what we are left with is uh, this uh, 30 from previous period plus 100 in this period, 130 minus 80. So that will be 50. So in week six, we are having 30 plus 100 this 30 plus 100. So that is 130 minus 80. So that will be 50. So we will be left with 50 units by the end of week seven. Now again, we are having positive requirements in week eight. So that will be 80 for week 8, we are having positive requirements. So that is 80 plus a safety stock of 20 minus 50 units are available. So net requirements of 50. Now we are having a plan order receipt here and corresponding plan order release. So what we will be left with? So 50 from previous period plus 100, 150 minus 80. So that will be 50 plus 100 minus 80. So that will be 70. So this is the uh, MIP matrix for the case when we have a safety stock, we have to maintain a safety stock. So the basic output again is the last row, this one. So we do need to have a plan order release of 100 in each of uh, week uh, two, three, five, and six. So if you are purchasing this item, this should be purchase order that we have to release. And this is the latest once we should release the order. And if you are making this uh, item in-house, then this should be the production order. And the only difference in this case was the safety stock. So we have made sure that we are maintaining a safety stock of 20 units uh, every month, uh, sorry, every week, because the time bucket is weak. Now, practically, it is possible that you, you are using, physically you are using previous periods uh, uh, leftover stock first and then you are using the new inventory. So that is a different policy whether the organization is having, for example, uh, last in first out policy or first in first out. But the point is that uh, we are having, say in this case in week four, a net requirement of 50 and we are having 30 from previous period and we are having 100 in this period. So whether we will be using 30 from previous stock and 20 from new stock or we will be using all 50 from the new stock is something different. It is something separate and the planning that relates to actual usage of the inventory. Uh, so the point is the leftover inventory is not actually uh, the one that we had in the previous period. I mean, if we are having 70 here, it does not necessarily mean that 70 out of uh, 30 out of these 70 will be from previous period and 40 from this period. So physically it depends how the stock is being utilized. But here we are planning that how much should the order be placed and when we are expecting to receive the corresponding quantity. So this order will be received in week four. This one will be received in week five. This one in week seven and this one in week eight. So here we have seen the concept of lead time offsetting again. So if you have any questions, you can ask.